Adventurers out there. If there was one line to describe the philosophy of Pixar's Up, that would be it. Adventurers out there! Released in 2009, Up tells the story of an old man named Carl Fredrickson. After the death of his beloved wife, he sets out to do what the couple had always dreamed of, a trip to the beautiful Paradise Falls. As he embarks on the adventure, unlikely friends are made and foes are faced. With its heartfelt story and themes, Up became another instant classic in Pixar's long line of hits. Be honest with us, you cried like a baby during the first 10 minutes of this film. Like the best Pixar movies, this film features a great story, emotion, and, you guessed it, characters. But out of this wild cast of explorers and animals, which ones would make the best help on an expedition? And which ones would be better off left at home? I'm Kifinosi with Wicked Binge, and this is Up, Good to Evil. As per usual, we'll be starting with the most good characters and working our way down to the evil. These characters are good. In first place, we're giving the gold medal of good to Ellie. Ellie is an interesting character in that she doesn't really have an active role in the film. Adventure. She dies before the story begins, and her presence amounts to less than 10 minutes of screen time. We don't even get any dialogue from her as an adult. Despite this, Ellie has the mark of a true adventurer. Ellie is by far the nicest and most kind-hearted person to be featured in the film. She's a very lively person, and she doesn't let tragedy get the better of her. While tragedies do occur in her life, such as the revelation that she cannot have kids, they don't keep her down for long. This is a stark contrast to her husband Carl, who is consumed by grief after her death. While her and Carl never get to see their dream become a reality, that being the trip to Paradise Falls, she doesn't let that get to her either. Instead, she believes that her relationship with Carl was her real greatest adventure. This shows that she also has the ability to look on the bright side of things. Ellie doesn't have nearly the amount of presence in the film as others on this list do, but the life she lived has a big impact on the movie going forward. Her death is the catalyst for Carl's trip to Paradise Falls, and he often looks to her for wisdom even in death. What do I do now, Ellie? By all accounts, Ellie appears to be the nicest and most down-to-earth character in the whole movie, making her a perfect fit for the golden medal. Not so bad for a character with under 10 minutes of screen time, wouldn't you agree? Next up, we're giving the silver medal of good to Russell. A wilderness explorer, Russell loves adventure more than anything else. The wilderness must be explored! With his admiration for exploring, you could almost look at him as the child that Carl and Ellie never had. He's full of all the energy and excitement they had as children, for sure. Now, Russell has a lot of positive traits going for him, and also a few negative ones. For one, Russell is extremely naive. Can you really blame him though when he's only a kid? Carl manages to convince him that a snipe is a real creature, and he truly believes that at one point he can use a bus pass in the middle of Paradise Falls. No, I'll just use my city bus pass. Russell can be quite inept at times too. He struggles with things like making a tent and becomes the dead weight of the group as well. He also has a knack for getting into trouble. He's accidentally present when Carl's house takes off and he gets abducted by months in the climax of the film. He's the instigator for a lot of the trouble that he and Carl get into during the movie. Despite this, Russell always means well and he tries his best to remain in good spirits, which is why we still rank him so high. He's extremely dedicated to those around him. He's obsessed with collecting his final badge, as he hopes it will earn the approval of his often neglectful father. He also becomes great friends with not only Carl, but also many other characters the two encounter on their adventure. As Russell himself puts it, an explorer is friend to all, be it plant or fish or tiny mole. While he is somewhat incompetent during the movie, he becomes far more self-reliant as the film progresses. He even manages to take out the fighters that attack him. By the end of the movie, he has become every bit of the adventurer he aspired to be when we first met him. Overall, Russell is an excellent explorer and easily earns the badge that is our second place. Getting the bronze medal of good is the main protagonist himself, Carl. As we meet him in present day, Carl is a typical crotchety old man. Quite a sight, huh, Ellie? He's closed himself off from others since the death of his wife and spends most of his time within his home. As he embarks on his trip to Paradise Falls, he makes little effort to break out of his shell. 
He sees his new traveling buddies like Russell as little more than nuisances, and he just wants them to leave him alone. There are even a few moments where he tries to get rid of them, especially the bird Kevin. He is particularly devoted to keeping his house safe, as it is all that remains of Ellie. This devotion becomes a weakness in some ways, however. When a construction worker's vehicle collides with the home's mailbox, Carl attacks him. Later in the movie, Muntz sets fire to the house, causing Carl to try and save everything in it. Both of these actions lead to some disastrous consequences, whether it be an encounter with the police after the former, or the loss of Kevin in the latter. But thankfully, as the story progresses, Carl starts to become more and more his own person. He learns to live his life and move on from the death of Ellie. This arc is best shown when he begins getting rid of valuable items in the house, and all so he can save Russell. Though they are at odds throughout much of the film, Carl ends up becoming truly great friends with Russell, making him the parental figure Russell never really had. Not only does he save him from months, but he also earns him the elusive badge Russell has been after. He becomes very protective of him, especially during the movie's climactic action set piece. He also grows to love Doug and Kevin too. In particular, he frees Kevin from the clutches of months, as he knows the explorer will not be kind to the mysterious bird. Mr. Fredrickson is also the one responsible for ending Muntz's schemes once and for all, saving future explorers from his wrath in the process. While Carl does spend a large part of the movie stuck in the past and being cranky, he ultimately grows into the character he was always meant to be. That is, of course, a free-spirited man yearning for new adventures to partake in. Carl might be a bit of a stick in the mud, but his arc of moving forward more than earns him the third spot on our list. Finishing off the good tier, we have the breakout star of the movie, Doug. A member of Charles Muntz's dog pack, Doug is a golden retriever outfitted with a voice device collar. My name is Doug. I have just met you, and I love you. That, however, is where the similarities end with his canine brethren. Doug is the runt of the pack. This is seen easily in his name, which is not part of the Greek alphabet like the other dogs. While the other dogs are focused on their objectives and pleasing their master, Doug is too busy being a dimwit. He's easily confused and his mind tends to trail off. While any other dog in the pack would quickly get the mysterious Kevin away from Carl and Russell and into the hands of their master, Doug does the exact opposite. Doug ends up bonding with the group and becoming friends with them. His foolishness even has the unintended outcome of months coming for Carl, showing that his lack of intelligence can come back to hurt everyone around him. Doug is definitely not the smartest of the animals featured in this movie, but he's undoubtedly the most loyal. He takes an instant liking to Carl and Russell, and after being mistreated by the rest of the pack, comes to the realization that Carl is his true master. You are my best friend. Doug will even get violent when Carl is in trouble, like when he bit months when he was under attack. Doug can also be a bit of a problem solver, managing to outsmart Alpha, the leader of the pack, during a confrontation with him. He manages to place the much feared cone of shame onto Alpha. This not only results in the other dogs laughing at Alpha in a similar manner to how they would at Doug, but also their realization that Doug is a far better authority figure than Alpha. This effectively makes Doug the new Alpha. And while we don't see much of him in his new leadership role, we can only assume he's a far better leader than Alpha ever was. In conclusion, Doug might not have the biggest brain, but he does have a pretty big heart. If there ever was an animated dog to be considered man's best friend, Doug would be it. That's it for the good tier. It's time to shed some light on those characters who are neither good nor evil. This is the gray area, and we only have one character in this tier. And who else could it be other than Kevin? A bird of an unknown species, Kevin plays a pretty important role in the movie. Because of her rarity, Charles Muntz has made it his mission to capture her, and he's devoted many years of his life to attempting to do so. Kevin has managed to evade Muntz for all this time, but her encounter with Carl and friends very nearly results in her capture. In terms of characterization, Kevin is all over the place. Honestly though, can you really expect anything more from a character that just squeaks and squawks? Kevin can definitely be friendly when she feels like it. She displays several motherly traits when around Russell. Kevin's a girl? She also logically acts this way around her own babies, whom she'll risk life and limb to keep safe. While she can definitely be nice, she isn't without her mean moments. Kevin can get very hostile at times. She attacked Doug during one scene and screeched right in Carl's face during their first meeting. 
Similarly to Doug before her, Kevin is also not exactly the sharpest tool in the shed. She'll try to eat anything she can get her beak on, whether it be Carl's cane, the balloons attached to the house, or even chocolate. Maybe somebody should warn her that chocolate is actually harmful to birds. As you can see, Kevin is quite the wild card in the cast of Up. She'll spend one moment protecting you and the next eating everything you own. With a personality like that, how could we not give her the sole spot in the gray area? With that out of the way, we move toward the characters you wouldn't want to cross. These characters are evil. First up, we're giving the Bronze Medal of Evil to not just one foe, but two. With that taken into account, it should come as no surprise that Beta and Gamma are in this spot on the list. The lieutenants of Muntz's dog pack, Beta and Gamma are a Rottweiler and a Bulldog duo respectively. Out of all the dogs in the pack, these two are only behind their leader Alpha and the lovable Doug in terms of screen time. Beta and Gamma are definitely not as evil as the next two characters on our list, but they do enough to make them deserving of this spot. Throughout the film, they make several attempts to take out Carl, Russell, and everyone else who stands in Muntz's way. They even chase after Russell and Doug when Carl starts to realize Muntz's true intentions. And they even pilot biplanes in an attempt to knock them out of the sky. While they clearly do some dastardly deeds, there are two things that hold them back on this list. Scream all you want, small mailman. Besides just not being as evil as the others, they are a lot more inept than the following two characters. While piloting the planes, all it takes is for Russell to shout squirrel for them to lose focus, immediately dropping them out of the battle. Hey! The second reason they are here is because they do end up becoming good. While we don't get to explore them much after they turn a new leaf, we still feel it's enough to prevent them from being lower on the list. Beta and Gamma aren't the most dangerous dogs you'll ever encounter, but these are definitely two to look out for. Unless you're around a bunch of squirrels, that is. The Silver Medal of Evil is going to the leader of the pack, Alpha. A Doberman Pinscher, Alpha is easily the most intimidating of the dogs that take after months. That is if you only judge him from his appearance, however. Alpha may lead his pack, but he often lacks the ability to be taken seriously. That is all the result of his voice caller, which has a malfunction that causes him to sound like a chipmunk. <laughs> While the other dogs will always listen to him, they aren't above laughing at him and his voice. This is enough to cost him the golden medal, but that isn't the only hindrance. He, like the other dogs in the pack, also has a change of heart at the end of the movie. Like the others, it doesn't offer enough characterization to get him out of the evil tier, but we do feel like it is worth mentioning. There you go, big fella. Thank you, Master. Still, Alpha has enough to get him the silver. He is far more aggressive than any of the other dogs, leading him to get far more violent when around characters like Russell, especially when compared to the other dogs. He's also the leader of all the dogs, which makes him a fitting follow-up for the recipients of our last medal, Gamma and Beta. And since he's in this spot, his master must not be far behind. Earning the gold medal of evil is the main antagonist of the film, Charles Muntz. In his younger years, Muntz was a renowned explorer, loved by fans of all ages. That all changed when he found the bones of a bird in South America. The scientific community turned their back on months, seeing the bones as nothing more than fake. This reaction galvanized Charles to find an alive bird of the same species, a mission he is still on at the time this movie takes place. When Carl and Russell finally meet him, they learn he is nothing like the man Carl admired as a child. Muntz in this movie can be seen as the foil to Carl. Like Carl, he is obsessed with trying to make this grand dream he's had in his head for years a reality. I promise to capture the beast alive! Both characters are also cranky shut-ins, shells of their former adventurous selves. The characters do begin to splinter off, however, when one makes a choice and the other doesn't. Carl begins to move past his wife's passing, while Muntz would rather remain trying to recapture the fame and glory of his youth. As the foil to a character who we placed firmly on the good tier, it only makes sense that Muntz gets a spot on the evil tier. As a villain, he's the one that all the others follow the orders of. It's also implied in the film that he has killed explorers in the past, making him the only character on this list that we know has actually killed anyone. 
If that doesn't earn him this spot, I don't know what else would. He's incredibly obsessed with capturing the bird, to the point where he doesn't even care whether he gets it alive or dead. He also has no problem dispatching anybody who tries to get in the way of him achieving his goal, whether it be Carl or Russell. With his cruel personality and actions, it makes the most sense for us to give Charles Muntz the dubious honor of being the most evil character on this list. Before we end things, how about we reward a few characters with the medals that fit them best? The Darwin Medal goes to everybody's favorite canine, Doug. He may have a big heart, but a big brain? He does not. <laughs> Point. The Pride Medal goes to the villain of the movie, Charles Muntz. His refusal to move past his glory days more than earns him this one. We're giving out the Wrath Medal to Alpha. Though he doesn't have the most intimidating voice, he more than makes up for that in terms of aggressiveness. Lastly, we're giving out the Gluttony Medal to Kevin. If you're willing to eat balloons, is there really any other medal you could get? But let us know in the comments section if you agree with our ranking, and tell us what we should cover next. Remember to hit that notification bell and binge our Good to Evil playlist, where we break down the moralities of characters in your favorite cartoons, shows, and movies. But most importantly, stay wicked.